Some of them may have policy differences. Some of them have been very clear with me. They have political differences with the bill. They say it's the wrong time to solve the problem or let the presidential election solve this problem. In fact, I had a popular commentator four weeks ago that I talked to that told me flat out before they knew any of the contents of the bill, any of the content, none, nothing was out at that point, that told me flat out, if you try to move a bill that solves the border crisis during this presidential year, I will do whatever I can to destroy you because I do not want you to solve this during the presidential election. By the way, they have been faithful to their promise and have done everything they can to destroy me in the past several weeks. That was Republican Senator James Lankford revealing that before the border bill's text was even released, he was already being threatened by a popular conservative influencer, all because he committed the sin of trying to actually fix the problem that his own party has spent God knows how many days, months, years complaining about. Because you see, when Republicans complain that something is broken, it's not because they want it fixed, it's because they want to complain that something is broken. And so now, because the GOP is already at risk of losing the issue of the economy as a cudgel to wield against Democrats, given how strong it's actually performing and how much consumer sentiment is improving, they have no choice but to double down on the border as their primary weapon heading into November. Which means that they will wail about the imminent danger at the border, about how it's responsible for crime and drugs and rape and the elimination of the white race, but try to actually offer them a solution? Well, you see, Hold on there, we wouldn't want to go that far. If you needed an indication of just how devoid of logic the GOP has become on this issue, here's Tim Scott. Finally, I, I, I just want to ask uh, whether or not this new bill that's just about foreign policy, whether you're going to vote in favor of it. Uh, foreign, foreign money for, uh, for Israel, for, for what's happening in Ukraine. What do you think of that standalone foreign policy bill? David, I voted no already a few okay. minutes ago, and here's the reason why. Unfortunately, what this administration and Chuck Schumer, they are doing, is using the crisis in Israel to support other priorities of the party. We should first secure our southern border, second, provide resources to Israel, third, take a look at Indo-Pacific, and fourth, make sure that we have accountability woven into any resources that we give to Ukraine. Without doing those four things in secession, it's gonna be hard for Republicans to support it. In other words, they're now saying that they couldn't possibly link a border bill with a foreign aid bill even though it was literally the Republicans who demanded that they be linked if we wanted any chance of foreign aid passing. So we couldn't have foreign aid unless it was linked with the border and then Democrats linked it with the border and then they're like, we couldn't possibly link these two things together. Please, dear God, someone make it make sense. Even Republicans have acknowledged the bad faith at play here. Here's Republican lawmaker Dan Crenshaw. Um, I, I understand some Republicans are saying, we don't need any changes to law. Then why did we write, a, write HR two? Why did, we, why did we do that? Why didn't Trump just shut down the border if you just think we don't need any changes to lie? He couldn't. He had to make a deal with Mexico, and he did a great job doing that. Um, but he had to rely on literally international agreements to get it under control. We do need changes to lie. You've got to change those loopholes in asylum. You've got to raise the bar for asylum. You've got to make it very clear that there's no paroling. Um, you need to institute Remain in Mexico as an authority in law. They're, you know, these are really simple fixes that need to be done. Um, and, you know, that emergency authority that everybody interpreted, I think, as entries, you need to clean that up. You need to make that clear that that's not entries, it's encounters. Probably I would decrease that number vastly, too. I think 5,000 is way beyond an emergency per day. You know, I think it should be closer to 1,000. But, like, you know, reasonable people can, can, actually, can actually make a good bill here. That's what the House should be doing. Do you have high hopes for that? <laughs> no. Um, Why not? But I'm, but I'm still going to try. I'm still going to try. The height of stupidity is having a strong opinion on something you know nothing about. I'm, I'm extremely disappointed in the very strange maneuvering by many on the right to, to, to torpedo uh, a potential border reform bill. If we have a bill that on net significantly decreases illegal immigration and we sabotage that, that is, that is inconsistent with what we told our voters we would do. People will make up whatever reasons they, they want to. There's a number of them, I'm sure, but it would be a, a pretty unacceptable dereliction of, of your duty. 
And look, it's all well and good that Dan Crenshaw is bemoaning the apparent shocking turn of events here, but I mean, come on, he knows why this is happening. The fact that his own party doesn't actually want any solutions should not come as a surprise for someone who was not born yesterday. He knows just as well as the next guy that his party exists to serve Donald Trump. And because Trump wants to run on the border heading into November, all his little underlings and sycophants and mouthpieces in the House Republican Conference and the Senate are gonna do whatever they can to stay in his good graces. If that means that they have to trash their own professed priorities, then guess what? That is exactly what they're gonna do. Because the most important part of being in a cult is blind fealty to the cult leader. So I know that you've probably heard me and everyone else at this point rail against such blatant, obvious hypocrisy, but remember, the Republicans are banking on us getting tired of repeating it. They're banking on a two-day news cycle about how they're hypocrites, and then we'll get tired of saying it over and over, and we'll give up, and then they can co-opt the border issue exactly where they left off and ride this thing to victory in November. I have zero intention of letting that happen. They wanna keep this as a potent issue for November, so our job is to hold them to account from now until November. To not create a vacuum that Republicans will immediately fill with the usual fear porn about the border and the Democrats' culpability in it. I will keep beating this drum every single day because if they're going to stop at nothing to try and manipulate Americans, we should stop at nothing to expose exactly what it is they're doing. And finally, I'll leave off with the words of Jamie Raskin, whose superpower is gutting Republican hypocrisy and making it sound like poetry while doing it. What makes this farce a tragedy is that Secretary Mayorkas and the U.S. Senate have been working for months to achieve precisely the immigration and border compromise the GOP has been demanding. And miraculously, they got to a bipartisan immigration agreement for billions of dollars more in border patrol officers, immigration judges, fentanyl detection machines, a far tougher border. It was good enough for Senator Mitch McConnell and dozens of GOP senators, and it was good enough for the Wall Street Journal, but the House megas would not take yes for an answer. Why? Because Donald Trump doesn't want a border solution. He wants a border problem, nothing else to run on. And Vladimir Putin certainly doesn't want $60 billion going to the heroic people of Ukraine defying his filthy imperialist invasion. All over the world, democracy and freedom are under siege today, and all our colleagues can think to do is to sell out our democratic allies and sell out the cause of human rights and then impeach a cabinet secretary working diligently to solve the immigration problem that they claim to care about. I yield back. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you wanna to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.